7 16 11 42 a.m eastern time i couldn't report anything until this point of time on the clock the house albanian mafia house where they had the lab where i witnessed a full-on uh a, what do you call it i'm just gonna say it in my layman's terms it was a <clears throat> elimination by the good guys oh i witnessed it i will never forget one second of that anyways it was a romanian chemical stench maker who also i don't know to what degree you have to ask the good guys who eliminated him but they took him out upstairs in that murder room that i filmed on floor three. Oh, i'll never forget a minute of it he was running the lab in the Albanian Mafia house. He's running a lab. After that, you can see a series of videos that I was allowed to film when I was allowed to film it. It was a considerable amount of time after the event, after the incident. I had to hide in my room, not talk, not move, the whole deal. I will never forget one second of that day. When I could come out, I started filming after I could come out because it was so serious. You don't generally go out with a camera. No, I can testify. People don't. I'm one of them. Then I started filming and that was the day I found my cat, Gabriel, in the house. All of a sudden, mysteriously out of the blue, there was a cat in this house. A different cat that nobody owned that had never been here before that was starved. When I found her, she was about two pounds and her belly was really fat from starvation. She was desperate for water, desperate for food, and she had shave marks and injuries all over her body from her ears to her tail, which I will talk about later, okay? It was so serious, the condition I found my cat in that I didn't know if she was going to pass away in my room. And I knew that she came from that elimination that I had witnessed over my head she had come with that man okay <clears throat> so that Albanian mafia house is where he, he had his lab the individuals that go in and out of that garage are part of this terrace compound with the chemical stenches and the lab human organ harvesting torturing of animals so on and so forth okay there is much evidence to the animal labs that I witnessed with my eyes inside of 1509 S Street Northwest, other than my own cat, which is the, the visible, obvious torture that she went through and shave marks like at a veterinarian shave marks all over her body are enough. But I even witnessed more than that. Multiple things that have to do with the illegal laboratory laboratory where they tortured animals okay well anyway so the mob house is coming and going coming and going in and out back and forth you got psychos that chop up human remains torture animals going in and out in and out back and forth up and down the street wherever they like to go within washington dc who knows where else they go. Nothing has changed. Nothing has stopped, okay? What I'm supposed to report right now is this terrorist cell is very active and that there's, as far as this morning when I could talk about it, which is now, dead bodies just in my bathroom. It's horrendous. You don't smell it so much in the hallway, but you do. It's like... Uh, level two you don't want to breathe through your mouth you know there's dead corpses somewhere and then when you go in the bathroom it's like level four and it's just so disgusting okay it was like that this morning um, around 7 a.m. 7 30 8 a.m. Um, the entire bathtub I had to bathe again just breathing through my mouth you do not breathe through your nose. You'd be crazy to do that. Um, you can smell the chemical dissolvent 
which is a distinct smell, but I'm not gonna get into writing it with a thesaurus, all the adjectives and descriptive words about what this smells like. This is so berserk that this is still going on in the capital of the United States. It's so berserk that these psychos just go up and down streets, drive around, walk around. It is so berserk that this is on the United States YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Like the kids in this country are so mentally plagued. I don't like to use the word mental illness because Vladimir Putin with Donald Trump, with the United Kingdom, with Joe Biden used the word mental illness as a social construct. We will talk about that later. It's the facts on paper. It was an attack, considerable and verified attack on our population, exactly like what they are doing with the media. The headlines about DHS, FBI, in quotes, believe domestic terrorism will rise after the Trump shooting. That's another one that came out 24 hours after the first one. FBI investigating domestic terrorism for the shooter. This terrorist cell has constant federal law enforcement crawling through the cubby holes. I have filmed DHS talking to the male terrorist, that man from the basement, the psychotic, scary as heck. That man was so scary to even look at. I have filmed DHS federal officers coming in here pretending to talk about Betty Boo and then sending hard evidence of mail to a name of Betty Boo listed as living here. All this is on the account, whatever you can gather, go ahead and review it. That was DHS. DHS is operated by Vladimir Putin. FBI has been on my account ever since I was at college, excuse me, in college in New York City. I have told the world how the FBI was following me around by the deli, following me around by the World Trade Center. Where I, whenever I left my campus and where I used to like to walk around, there would be the FBI. I had NYPD following me in my vehicle. I had a nice car. I worked for it. I owned my own car. I didn't sell my body for my car. I had an NYPD following me around in my car, all the way to the Holland Tunnel, all the way to the Battery Tunnel. And whatever way I wanted to go home, I can't remember right now what tunnel takes me to the Staten Island. I can't remember. My memory from trauma is so bad. I can't remember the street I lived on for five years in in New York and Staten Island. It's it's like that. Anybody who's been through traumatic events there, memory kind of takes a takes a hike. Their memory doesn't work, but it'll come back. Cause of course I remember what street I lived on in New York. I lived there for five years. All right, so I had massive law enforcement coming after me as soon as I went after Bannon, as soon as I went after Trump. As soon as I started going after white supremacist, white terrorist groups, as soon as that happened, it was really, really ugly, okay? It was law enforcement. And I at first didn't realize it. It took me about a week. I didn't feel safe, though, with that FBI, the two FBI guys by my college. You felt it. You feel it. You feel it. I'll talk about it later because I got to do my report. You feel it, they're not safe, they're not looking at you nice. This is scary, why are they looking at me like this? I thought FBI, I thought NYPD were my friends. Not my friends, but hear me out. I'm a criminal justice major. I was planning to go to law school. I wasn't in the criminal world. I couldn't understand why cops were following me around. 
it was really, really upsetting when I realized it. They did a lot of stuff and things that were really serious, more than just following me around. But we will stop talking about this right now so I can get to the point of this video. But what I witnessed inside of this terror cell. So when I came to DC, there was a gang of feds with a gang of DCPD that I don't know how they put the ad out. It was obvious I was looking for a place. We'll talk about it later. The long story short is I replied to the ad here, okay? I moved in desperate and in abject poverty. I had been taking statistical math. You know how when you're taking any college classes and your last three weeks, four weeks, your last bit, in, I can't remember words, in your uh, course prepares you for your next course. So I was already, and I already, uh, see I just say the same words. I already know statistical math, okay? The fact I know statistical math and am ready to take the course when I get my memory back and the fact that I'm denied employment and can't get a dishwashing job is really, really serious, okay? It's really, really serious and I knew it. I can't get a job to save my life in the United States. Not one, dude. And I know it. All right, so... Um, I moved in here and there's been nothing but what I have reported to the counter-terrorist agents ever since. You can review my uh, Facebook, it's pretty thorough on Facebook, is because um, they shut down the uh, Twitter, Donald Trump was still in office, um, but I picked it right up on Facebook. It was uh, after the homicide, I know I was really heavy with making it very clear on DOJ, DHS. FBI, FBI, sorry, I forgot my point. I had been going after the FBI ever since I left New York. I mean, I hit them in Europe when I was there. I hit them in Chicago when I was there. I did not stop hitting them because I knew that one thing because I personally remembered it. FBI were really dirty. They were full on part of this. And I knew how serious that was when you had more than one a group however many i didn't know but i started to learn by chicago how many it was thousands it and i i, I learned by chicago that the fbi had basically basically but this is by 2019 okay if you're wondering what year by 2019 the fbi had been branched into two parts evil fbi and good fbi there is no in between there is no in between. So evil FBI was apparently here. I mean, I'm so naive, but then I was. I'd never been through a, a homicide. I'd never really smelled a corpse. I said this, the world knows I was a rookie. I wasn't expecting to work in law enforcement or be a quasi agent. I was acting like an agent and conducting myself like an agent and doing all the work I could possibly do on my own, which is what you would hire an agent to do. But I didn't have this intent. I really thought and wanted to go to law school. So you can think one thing and you can end up doing something else that God wants you to do, okay? So clearly my fate was you're gonna be doing work as an agent. And that's all I did. And I, while I was in here, I just kept helping the counter-terrorist agents who have actually uh, taken guys down here. They take them down, I, I can't do that. I helped them and I kept saying it's DHS, it's FBI, I helped them in every way I possibly could. And you can see what I did, okay? You can go ahead and review that, it's on Facebook. Um, Facebook became a real issue. They kept trying to savagely shut down my Facebook. Oh my God, it was like a quasi war. For months they kept trying to shut down Facebook, completely shut my account down. The good guys stopped the Hawaii Navy treason cooping military that was basically who had their hands in that it's out of Hawaii from shutting down my Facebook so the public thanks to the good guys can review what I'm talking about 
Okay, we are at 15 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and just continue because sometimes you can't always cram it in. So with these articles about the FBI investigating domestic terrorists, the good guys who conduct raids and are always flying over this house, okay? Doing more than just flying. They know the FBI are writing articles for Putin. It's malicious and it's considered an act of war. It's not my department. Like when I say the chemical stenches and acts of war, someone like me can figure out enough of it, but I'm not an army commander in the good military and everybody knows that, but it's really serious when you have federal law enforcement issuing to the press who's covering all of their felony crimes up and only writing articles that they're releasing which are fabricated and fraudulent these are all criminal actions about how the domestic terrorists that they know they know these guys the, who are coming in here into this terrorist cell i've witnessed and they know everybody's witnessed and i've witnessed the, the constant military operation they know the good guys know about them i've known about the fbi since they were stalking me outside my college okay they know that we know about them and they just keep writing their articles how they're investigating domestic terrorist domestic they know the domestic terrorists i filmed them in the house talking to the terrorists um about betty boo now that man that i filmed talking to dhs he died within two weeks after that video he, he died all right, I'm the only one left in the terrorist cell who's alive to talk about anything, okay? And what have I said since then? That it has not stopped. And that's what I'm reporting right now. It has not stopped. Albanian mob is just crashing loud, going back and forth, fight and fight, fight, fight for Trump, 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 Trump. Okay? And Biden, Biden, Biden. It's either one, they're going to be pardoned of the big guys. They do the most heinous violence. They want to cruise down the road with an arm and a leg in the back of the car. Who knows what they're hauling around. They can't be touched. They can't be stopped. So on and so forth. And that is happening. And this morning, when I took a bath, I had to breathe through my mouth from the chemical dissolvent, which I will describe when I get a thesaurus and some adjectives and descriptives of how disgusting that chemical peers can be. No question about it, chemical stench, but it's not one of the ones that beeps and buzzes. It's a liquid type chemical smell that is part of the process of dissolving human remains. So that chemical smell was just everywhere while I took a bath, right like under my bath tub. And then when you stand up, I'm 5'9", when you stand up right by my toilet and on the area by the sink, okay, all you smell is level 3 dB. It's really horrendous. All right, now as far as last night and yesterday's terrorist activity, I'm not able to tell anybody what I witnessed in here other than what I said about all the chemical gases, martini gas, going back and forth, racing to the bathroom, dead bodies, chemical dissolvent. It's the same thing today, but at a very certain time on the clock, could I do it? I could only do it after they all started going in and out again from Albanian Mafia House at the time I stated on the intro. The time now is 12.01. I've been talking for about 16 minutes. I can't always do this in 14 minutes. I hope I clarified any questions people might have about these articles and why they're getting uh, eliminated for writing these domestic terrorist articles when the domestic terrorists are known and proven the good guys. No, it is FBI and DHS. I hope this is bringing clarity into why I say that. I am a witness to massive, massive uh, terrorism, domestic and 
sworn I'm a witness in here. So there's no possible way that the good guys are going to have me driving off in a budget rental car, waiting here for months and months to save tiny, tiny little bits and pieces of money. Okay, and might I end with this. This property, 1509 S Street Northwest, is no longer under the legal possession of the Russian mafia. The Russian mafia out of Moldova used to run this house as a business. That business is no more. The business was out of Moldova. They were licensed, you can find it. It's to some degree on the internet, but it's over in foreign countries. It is not there anymore, okay? I will keep the public updated to what status that business is and to who owns this property. But the property itself, this 11509 S Street Northwest is getting easier and easier for an investigator to look it up. There's many ways to find that. One way I could do it is through my bank, my personal bank. But I'm not to do any of that because I'm a witness in here to all of this. I'm just to lay low and I'm gonna be giving this information by the proper authorities. The good guys will let me know, okay? But as far as today, the despots, Donald Trump and Joe Biden, with Putin and Saudi Arabia, are ordering their terrorists who I can ID and testify are guilty of massive, massive, major felony crimes, violent, every one of them is a violent charge. They're going in and out, in and out, in and out, in 101 degree weather. The weather is 101 degrees in Washington, D.C. It's a historical heat wave and they're just going in and out, in and out, in and out. Nothing can stop us. Look at us, high on drugs in the heat. Here we are. Okay? All right, bye.